Hello everyone and welcome to another Symphony tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to stop your bar from losing money. Make sure you stick around until the end of this video where I will share my number one tip that will increase your bar's profitability. When we talk about increasing profits in the hospitality business, there are a couple of topics that always come up such as liquor costs, staff wages, and avoiding overtime. These are often discussed in manager meetings and most establishments have these under control. If your does not, you should start there. Making money as a bar owner requires you to do more than just serve drinks on a nightly basis. You also need to pay attention to details that you may not believe could affect your bottom line. Here are some topics that are often overlooked. Avoid overpours. You trust your bartenders to follow drink recipes to the letter, so you may not suspect them of accidentally or intentionally overpouring customers' drinks. However, overpours eat away at your profits and end up costing your bar money. Even overpouring a drink by half an ounce can rob your bar of money it needs to stay afloat and thrive in the local market. So what can you do? Consider running some refresher trainings for the bar staff and make them use measuring jiggers. Some might feel offended because they have many years of experience, but those who are are often the worst offenders. Next, disallow freebies. Free drinks also take away from your bar's profits. Customers enjoy receiving freebies on their birthday or other special occasions. However, as a bar owner, you may not be able to sacrifice the money involved with doling out drinks at no cost to the customer. If your bartenders have the habit of giving out freebies, it is time to end this behavior once and for all. Disallow free drinks and instead make sure that every customer is charged accordingly. Next, improve the atmosphere. You should match the atmosphere of your bar to the clientele that is bringing in on a regular basis. If your bar has outdated decor or tacky furnishings, you may want to update it to make it more appealing to the people who come in to order drinks and food from you. You may also want to consider what kind of music you play in the bar and how loud or soft it is while it's being played. Music that is too loud or not loud enough can be enough to turn customers away at the door. The temperature of your bar also affects how happy your customers are and whether or not they will come back. By keeping the temperature at a comfortable level, you make your bar more appealing and help it be more successful. Check your online reviews and talk to your customers. They will often tell you if there is a problem. Next, try to establish an online presence. In today's competitive bar and restaurant market, you need an online presence to boost awareness of your brand. Many customers now go online to check out the bar's reputation or menu before deciding whether or not to visit the establishment in person. If you do not have an online presence, you effectively are allowing customers to pass you over in favor of your competitors. You do not have to spend thousands of dollars on a fancy website to have a great online presence. Use the free tools that are available for you. Start with Google Maps and claim your business. It's free. Check the business details, such as name, address, phone number, and open hours and make sure they are accurate. Add pictures of the location, drinks, and the menu itself. Customers often want to know the price range of the items on the menu before coming in. You can also check Apple Maps as well. It's not as popular as Google Maps, but it's gaining traction fast. Next, check websites like Yelp, OpenTable, and TripAdvisor. Tourists and local alike rely on reviews and pictures to find new spots to grab a drink and watch a game. Finally, go to social media. Make sure your bar has a Facebook and Instagram page with pictures and information. And ask your staff members to post on their social media at the beginning of their shift or on special events. We know nobody wants their social media feed to be flooded with pictures of their workplace, but a short 5 to 10 second long Instagram or Facebook story will not bother anyone. Have them take a sweeping video of the view or someone making a cocktail and then play some music and a quick call to action such as join us today for an awesome mojito and watch the game at Mike's Bar. It's free, it takes less than a minute and it can have a great impact on your business. 
Now that we discussed the staff training, atmosphere and online presence, let's talk about the POS end. You should review your food and drink items in the POS every 3 months or so. First, check the prices to ensure they are correct as per the menu. Then, check that all the menu items are available. If you see any open food or open drink items in the reports, ask your bartenders why they needed to use them and add the items into the POS to ensure they are properly priced. And finally, the most effective tip that I have ever seen to improve profits in the bar is implementing blind drops. If you are not familiar with what blind drops are, it is basically a way to remove the cash line from the employee report so the bartenders don't know the exact amount of cash they have to turn in at the end of their shift. Bartenders should always keep their tips separate from the cash bank and the bank should always be accurate during and at the end of their shift. I have seen employees get mad or even quit after implementing blind drops and that is most often because they are doing things that they were not supposed to so if this happens to you, know that you are better off without them. So now, let's take a look at EMC and see how we can implement these features. Alright, so here we are in EMC and let's tackle the first problem, reviewing and changing prices. I'm gonna go ahead and open menu item maintenance and that's under the configuration tab. And I'm gonna click a search in order to populate the list of menu items. Now, our database is organized into blocks. So the first block here has open items, then I have some course lines, breakfast entrees, and so on. So in order to locate the beer section, for example, I can use the binoculars up here, or I can use the keyboard shortcut control F, and then I'm gonna change the field to search by to name, and I'm gonna type in beer, and then I'm gonna say find now. So it located ginger beer, and that's not what I'm looking for, and I found domestic beer and imported beer, so that's what I need. I can see that my domestic beer is in the 35,000 block and the import beer is in the 36,000 block. So in order to separate these to see them easier, we can also use this object in range and I can say I want to see menu items between 35,000 and then I'm going to put a dash and 40,000 because that's where my glass of wine starts here and then click search. So now from that entire database, I can only see my menu items that are imported and domestic beer. So next I'm gonna move to the price record and here is where we can check the beers. And as you can see, for example, if we take a look at Bud here, we have two price levels and one we have a default price level and then we also have a happy hour price level and these are the two prices that it has. Another way to only isolate that particular group, what we can do is we can use the major groups or the family groups as a filter. So if I click on the ellipsis here, I can either select a family group. For example, I can select only import beer or only domestic beer, or I can select the major group and click on beer and then click OK and then do my search. So that will also be a way to select only your beer items just in case you don't have them separated in blocks like I do. So then that's gonna use the major group to isolate them. And you can change your prices like that. So now that we know how to select the menu items and to only show the ones that we're interested in, let's take a look at editing the prices themselves. Of course, there's the manual way where you can select the menu item and just manually enter the price. But let's say that I would like to increase my happy hour pricing by 50 cents. So as you can see, this price sequence number two is where my happy hour pricing is linked to, and it would be ideal if I would only see that. So unfortunately, there is nothing in the search feature that can help me with that, but what I can do is I can use the filter up top. So what I can do is change the filter to price sequence number, since that's what I'm trying to filter by, enter the number two here, and click filter now. So by doing that, not only I'm seeing only my beers, but I'm seeing only my happy hour beers. So now I can just click and drag on this rectangle at the end to select all of them. And we have a feature here. If I right click on this, we have a bulk price editor. So if I click on my bulk price editor, what I can do is I can keep the same values. 
set prices to a specific value but as you can see my items are six dollars seven dollars 650 so i cannot do that but i can increase the price by an amount so i'm gonna select that and the value that i'm gonna choose is 50 cents and then i'm gonna click apply update so now all of my six dollar items become 650 all of my 650 become seven and so on so that's a nice quick way to change and adjust your pricing accordingly. Once I'm done, all I have to do is click OK and all my prices are updated. Once that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and save and now the prices are live. Next, we're going to take a look at setting up blind drops. In order to set up blind drops, there are a couple of fields we'll have to take a look at. The first one is going to be in the reporting groups. So in the configuration tab, I'm going to click on reporting groups. These are the groups that are showed as totals on the employee reports. And as you can see, we have cash, tips paid, credit cards, vouchers, room charges, and so on. So the one we're interested in is, of course, is the cash. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis here. And what you want to make sure is that option number four is selected. Do not display for blind drop reports. So out of all of these reporting groups, cash will not be displayed for the employees we designate as having blight drops. So once that option is selected, go ahead and click OK, save and close. Next, we're going to take a look at employee roles. We're going to click on the enterprise level and then here in the configuration tab, personnel level, click on roles. The role that I'm interested in is the bartender role. So I'm going to double click the rectangle next to the name here. Then I'm going to go into operations and then I'm going to go to ad hoc reports. So here in ad hoc reports in the general options area, if you scroll down on this, it's kind of hidden. So I'm not sure why they made it so small that we have to scroll down. There is this option that says do not show blind drops for tender media groups. So the tender media group cash that we assigned as being a blind drop, make sure that your bartenders have this option enabled. If we take a look at a manager, for example, that option is not enabled. So a manager will be able to see the cash and the bartender will not. After that, we're just going to go do a quick spot check on our employees. To do this, I'm also in the configuration tab in the personnel section. I'm going to click on employee maintenance. I'm going to click search to populate my employee list. And let's take a look at one of our bartenders. This is our bartender section here. So I'm just going to select one of them. And then in the role section, we have to make sure that they do have the role of bartender. And if I check the next one, also the role is correct. Next one, the role is correct. So everything should be good. I didn't make any changes, so there's nothing to save. So now that I am satisfied that everything is correct, we can go ahead and take a look at some reports and see the before and after. As you can see in this before report, we could see the cash total line here. And in the after report, the cash total line is gone. So them not being able to see the cash total line, they're just going to be obligated to drop all the cash they have in the bank. And if the bank is not correct, then whoever is counting the cash at the end of the day can have a serious conversation with them and ask them why they are over or short. Let me know in the comments below which of these topics you're going to apply in your bar and what topic you would like to see feature in a future video. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symfony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.